Well, good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Thank you for coming to worship with us. We truly value and appreciate your presence today. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we come today through the storms and through the rain to worship you, to remember the promise that you gave us the promise of your love and of your forgiveness. May you lift the burdens we bring to you today, and may we leave refreshed, renewed, and ready for service. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to please stand and join me in the confession and forgiveness found in your bulletins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. Please take a moment of silence. Eternal God, our Creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, with work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into the hearts, our hearts, through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share the peace with one another.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
A reading from Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Lord, you are good to all, and your compassion is over all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who Second lesson is from Romans. I'm speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accused and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, 
He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, beside women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I invite the children to come forward for a children's message. Well, I have a dilemma. I have a problem. See, I brought some bread for us, but I don't think it's enough. Is this enough for all of us? No. Even, even if I broke it in two, still only two of you, and I could, I could maybe break it in another piece, but then only four of you get a piece. And do you think you'd be full when you eat this? If you just had this little piece, if we just took... No. No, you wouldn't. So, this kind of reminds me of our story this morning where Jesus is... The people are hungry that are gathered around Jesus and his disciples have five loaves and two fish and there's like 10,000 people. Mm, that's not enough food for them, right? Just like this, right? This just isn't enough for everybody here. Yeah. And then Jesus blesses the fish and the bread, and everybody is fed, and you know what? They even have leftovers. And that's just this crazy miracle. Well, we're not going to be able to do that today, but the miracle for us is that, not that this little wafer, I can, we can somehow make it feed everybody and be satisfied, but that we've got the good news, right? We've got a story to tell. And when we share that story with someone else, it fills them with hope. And you know what? And then they share it with someone else, and it fills them with hope. And you know what? We always have leftovers. We always got more that we can share with other people. And you know what the good news is? Yeah, the whole world can know. And the good news is God loves us. God really, 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 really does love us. And nothing, 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 nothing can get in the way of God's love for us. Not a single thing, no matter how much we think it might. And that's our good news. So, may you be, share the good news that you have, and may you feed others, and may they be, go on and feed others. And we'll have lots of good news to go around. Pray with me. Please repeat after, I, after me. Dear God, your good news is a miracle to us. Teach us to tell the stories to people that are around us. And teach us to live out the good news in our lives. Amen. Thanks for coming up. So what is enough? What is enough? Will there be enough? Do we have enough? Can we be generous? When we're afraid that there's not going to be enough, what we tend to do is start hanging on to things, 
right? We get what we can while we can because there's not enough. And we fail to take into account what we already have, our gratitude. But when we do take into account what we have and feel gratitude, then we begin to recognize that there's abundance around us and there is enough. It's called refocusing, (laughs) refocusing your mind, your mindset, to finding enough, even in your most desolate times and places. For where Jesus is, there is plenty, even in the wilderness. Today's gospel story begins with Jesus having a really, really bad day. He learns that his cousin, mentor, best friend, has died by brutal murder, by the beheading, that his disciples, John's disciples, have buried his body, that Jesus has no opportunity to say goodbye. And this comes upon right after having been rejected by his hometown and kicked out and rejected by his synagogue. And Jesus is feeling heartbroken. I think we can all relate to that feeling of heartbreak when we're grieving, when we've lost someone so significant to us, when we have been rejected. And so he wants to be alone. He wants to go to a place where it can just be quiet. And he can be alone A place where he can pray, where he can cry, where he can rest. But when he arrives to his deserted destination, what he finds is a crowd of people in need. And he responds with compassion for them. And he teaches them, and he heals their sick. Jesus feels compassion. But soon the disciples assess their situation. They're very practical thinkers, those disciples. They analyze their assets, and they come to a logical conclusion. We don't have enough. So they go to Jesus, and they ask him to send the people home, because we don't have enough. But Jesus says, they don't have to leave. You feed them. And the disciples protest. All we have are five loaves and two fish. We don't have enough. And Jesus says, bring me what you have. Bring me what you have. Now imagine the disciples at this time feeling overwhelmed by their assignment, their task, maybe frustrated stuck, they're having a wilderness experience. Matthew says that Jesus went to a deserted place, which in Greek is eramos, which means wilderness. And the wilderness, this deserted, desolate place, is a good place to grieve, a good place to pray, to repent. It's a lonely place. But God is not absent in the wilderness. Scripture supports that again and again with stories of wilderness experiences in which God is present. For God uses the wilderness as a place to call people, to gather people, to nurture people, to feed people, to instruct people. Because there are no distractions, the wilderness can be a time of deep spiritual growth and intensity. Now, when a pastor leaves, many churches feel that they are having a wilderness experience. Anxious questions fill the air. How long will it take to find a new pastor? 
Will we lose members while we're in the in-between? What if we make a mistake and we call someone who damages the church? How will we adjust to a new preacher whose personality and style and philosophy may be very different from what we've known before? Not to mention a constellation of different strengths, weaknesses, and quirks. Great figures in scripture have been through the wilderness too. Moses, David, Jesus. It's a necessary stage in the spiritual journey. Messiah is in a stage of spiritual journey. And sooner and later, one way or another, each one of you will be in that same stage in your own personal lives or have been and can identify it right now. That was a wilderness experience for me. Because in the wilderness, there is plenty of difficulty. There is discomfort. That's part of the wilderness time. For it is a time that challenges your assumptions. Many of us live with the assumption that if we love and obey God, good things will happen to us. But this assumption is not supported by scripture at all. No matter how faithful you are, no matter how true you may be, you will find yourself in these desolate times this wilderness, wilderness at some point, but this does not mean that God failed you. Now, it is tempting at times of transition to rush into a frenzied search for a minister. Members become restless, begin hinting that they might leave the congregation for some one with more stability. Rumblings have heard, the sick are not being visited, Outreach opportunities are being missed. Leaders can feel pressured to make quick decisions and know they are getting it done. But the transition time is an opportunity. It's a gift to embrace God's movement and work among the congregation to strengthen, to purge, and to transform. See, this can be a time that's entered thoughtfully, humbly, prayerfully, expectantly, patiently. This can be a time in which we find ourselves now. Who are we now? And identify fitting in to an even greater ministry than we can imagine. Avoiding the wilderness means missing out on some of God's greatest promises. The wilderness, one of its greatest gifts is the opportunity to refocus. To refocus in the wilderness is to lead to focusing in on important things. Truly recognizing who you are now and appreciating what you have to offer now. Bring me what you have. Focusing in on gratitude in the face of a fear of not enough. For God can and does provide in the wilderness, and that scripture definitely supports. So in today's wilderness story, Jesus refocuses the disciples and the crowd, for they come with need, and they see their present condition, and it is shaped by there is not enough. But Jesus sets a table in the wilderness. And where Jesus is, there is plenty, even in the wilderness. And we are included in that invitation to the disciples to serve, to distribute, to gather. Jesus says, you feed them. And when the disciples say, we don't have enough, Jesus says, bring what you have to me. Blesses the fish and the bread calls the disciples to distribute the food, and all are fed with plenty left over. There is enough, 
even when there is little, there is enough. When it is offered in response to Jesus' call. Now, key to understanding Jesus' call is that call is not one in which we are required or expected to solve it all. Jesus calls us to show up. Not have the answers, not have it all figured out. The disciples had it figured out. Show up. Bring your prayers, prayers, your passion, and your love for Jesus. Now is a time to truly recognize what do we have on hand? To name the five loaves and two fish of Messiah Lutheran. What is right on hand right now? And ask God, what is your dream for us? Refocus from the worries of loss, of making mistakes, of losing what we have now to who you are now and what you have to offer now. So I invite you, I have a little assignment. It's called communication and action. Here's your action point. Consider what are the five loaves and two fish that you have on hand right now in the wilderness. Before decisions are made, feelings are settled right now. Where is the five loaves and two fish? To get you started, I have a few thoughts. There are resources among us to fund programs and ministries that are truly a priority. There are physical assets on the ground that can serve the people of this community and beyond in ways that we probably haven't even imagined yet. There are talented leaders among parents and grandparents and youth and elderly that can provide for the faith formation of our children, our youth, and adults. But here's number one. There is the good news. Romans 9, I'm not really focusing in on that today, you noticed, even though we're still in the Roman study. Because Romans 9 is a very short transitional paragraph that we read today, 1 through 5. It's transitioning from Paul's theological magnum opus of chapters 5 through 8 into another section of the letter. And in this transition paragraph, Paul laments. He's lamenting. He's saying, my heart is broken. I am full of deep sorrow. I am deeply anguished. Paul's hurting. Why is Paul hurting? He just gave one of the most brilliant reflections on what the good news is. He should be full of joy. He just shared the good news but he's grieving because his friends and family, the people he knows and loves the most in the world, do not believe the good news he has just shared. I bet almost everyone can identify with that. There's someone in your life that just doesn't believe the good news. And it hurts because you want them to believe, to know, to, to experience this fullness that you've experienced. That's where Paul is. That's why he's grieving. And what is the good news that he just shared? God loves us, and nothing, 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 nothing can stand in the way of the love of God in Jesus Christ. And you have the good news in your hearts, in your minds, and in your actions. You have the good news in your church. You have the good news in your hopes and your dreams. 
And the greatest bit of enoughness about all of this is that the good news is enough for everyone with leftovers. Trust God. Act in compassion. Assess your resources with an attitude of gratitude rather than do we have enough. And witness, not enough, transform into plenty. For where Jesus is, there is plenty even in the wilderness. So even when we feel depleted, we feel like we're going through this desolate time, we can experience an opportunity to change our focus from what was and what's unknown to what we have and what is possible. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe. Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Generous, compassionate God, we gather before you to pray for the Church, the world, and all in need. God of the Covenant, 
Call your church on earth to worship together to glorify your name in every language and in every land. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of abundance, who provides fields of wheat and vineyards of grapes, bless farmers and growers who furnish bread and wine for tables of abundance. Lord, in your mercy. God of all compassion, raise up just leaders who care for the poor and hungry. Let nations share your bounty across the world and assure that no one goes without food. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, fill those who are starving, whether they long for food or companionship. Comfort the lonely and grieving. Heal those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, especially Ron Fells, June Danka. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God who satisfies the feeding programs of this congregation and community, be with sandwich makers and cookie bakers, with those who stock food pantry shelves, and those who point out need, whether in our neighborhood or half a world away. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless us as we remember the saints at your everlasting feast until we join them at your bountiful table. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands we place all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in the mercy of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for this time of giving of our gifts. Merciful God, you open wide your hand. Mm. 
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should in all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, healed open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, you alone are holy, you alone are God. The universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, with every breath. We praise you, O God. Generations bless your faithfulness through the water, by day, night and day, across the wilderness, out of exile, into the future. We bless you, O God. We give you thanks for your dear Son at the heart of human life, near to those who suffer, beside the sinner, among the poor, with us now. We thank you, O God. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. We pray for the gift of your spirit in our gathering within this meal among your people throughout the world. Blessing, praise, and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ Jesus, by your spirit in your church, without end. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You may be seated. The meal is prepared, and all are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. The ushers will let you know when you can come forward. You may kneel or stand along the railing. You'll receive the bread and then the choice of either the dark liquid, which is wine, or the light liquid, which is grape juice. There are also gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know. Come, let us eat.
Please stand and receive the post-communion blessing. Now may you know in this meal of enoughness, in this good news that is plenty and overflowing, that the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthens you and keeps you always in his grace. Amen. Jesus Christ, host of this meal, you have given us not only this bread and cup, but your very self, that we may feast on your great love. Filled again by these signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice, may we thirst for your way of peace, for you are Lord forevermore. May be seated for the announcements. I invite you to read through the Lavender Messenger. Uh, just a couple things I want to lift up. We are doing baby bottle boomerang, and you'll find the baby bottles kind of, it's to my left here. So on this side, as you're walking towards where coffee is in the fellowship hall, there's a um, bunch of empty baby bottles. Pick one up, fill them up with change, bring them back, and it is uh, with Lutheran Family and Children's Services to support them. Also today, between services, uh, in the fellowship hall, there's a continued discussion about Stephen's ministries, so you can hear the stories from the caregiver's point of view and from the care receiver's uh, and what this ministry is about. Um, for spiritual growth in a congregation. Other announcements can be found here. Uh, one other is we are doing Eclipse Hunger. What that is, you know, the big eclipse is coming on August 21st, and you need special glasses to see them. And if you've gone to Walmart or any place like that, they've got them for sale. Don't buy them. Bring $5 or five cans of food or, or some sort of food good, dried good, and uh, you'll receive one from uh, cross lines. Uh, so it's a great way to um, pick up your necessary glasses to watch the eclipse and contribute to the community. Cross lines is having a viewing party on the 21st. So if you want to check that out, you can uh, contact Chris Callen or check out cross lines website. With that, I invite you to please stand and receive the benediction. And now may the power of God strengthen you, may the love of Jesus Christ heal you, and may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you in your lives, now and forever. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.